Welcome to MASH Matters, the podcast celebrating the greatest television series of all time. I'm Ryan Patrick, and he is Jeff Maxwell. Jeff, what are you doing? What? Jeff? Jeff? Oh, my what? goodness. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, hey, recording. Ryan. We're what recording the heck a podcast. Is- Oh, oh, a podcast? Okay. Oh, all right. Good. Hi, everybody. This is Jeff Maxwell at a podcast. Yeah. Now, oh. I want to say uh, yeah. we're doing something a little, this is going to be a wild ride today. We're doing something completely different here today. We're doing this both on audio and video. We're going to release this video also of this podcast. Uh, we've never done that before. Never. Um and uh, so if you want to see what Jeff was laughing at, go to the website, mashmatters.com. Look at the, uh, the show notes for this particular episode. This is episode, what is this? Episode 84? I think this 84? is 84, I believe. A- um, 84V for yeah. video. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you'll see the link. You can also just go to our YouTube channel and, and see it there as well. Um, this that is-, is if you care. If you care, if you want to see what you we care. look like, I'm telling you right now, we have faces for radio. Okay. We have the perfect podcasting faces. We so, do. you know, we have good w- watch, it, <laughs> watch at your own risk. Um, and my hair is not bad. Is no, it? you got it's good hair today. My, yeah. We yeah, have our headphones on. So that, that alters our, yeah. uh, our magnificent hair today. But, uh, <laughs> and my beard is looking very full today on the It, do, uh, on it the does video. look full. It yes. looks full. Thank and you. people Thank are going to notice that. They're going to write and say, little Ryan's itchy. beard looks really full. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the nicest thing they can say about this particular episode, I think we'll be okay. Um, and of so, course, my uh, goatee. Yes, yes. You can watch all of this on our website. Just go to mashmatters.com and look for episode 84 and you can see it right there. Um, in, yes. in, in vivid 4k. Well, no, I don't think it's 4k, but it's not 4K. uh, yeah, you probably don't want to watch it in 4k in retrospect. Um, so <clears throat> this is going to be, we've done something similar to this before, but yeah. even then we were more prepared than we are now. Yeah. So let, let me, let me give a little bit of a backstory here. Um, we were at, at the time of this recording, uh, we were going to record an interview with several people. We don't want. We're not going to tell you who it is yet, but we're because we're we're gonna we're gonna do it eventually. We're um, gonna do it, and, and it's gonna very be really exciting. People, very it's, exciting. It's people. gonna be great. You're gonna. Yes. I think you're gonna really really enjoy it. Um, unfortunately, something happened, and one of our guests had to reschedule at the last minute, and so we are going to reschedule that episode, that interview, somewhere down the line. That leaves us without anything <laughs> for a new episode. We have a new episode coming up. We just missed one, so we don't want to. We don't want to miss another episode. <laughs> so we thought, well, hey, why don't we just push record and see where this takes us? Okay, uh, go ahead, push record. See what happens. I, 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 we're already recording. I, we, we started Ooh. like five Ooh. minutes, five minutes ago. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. Um, you look great. You look great. You sound great. Thank you, Mr. I'll put thank on you my, very much. I'll put on my glasses too. So yes, thank you, Miss Purdy. Thank you very much. Um, so we have nothing prepared for this episode. Nothing. Usually, we have <laughs> questions and uh, a few, uh, even a few answers too prepared. Yeah. Uh, the last time we did this unprepared episode, we actually did have a couple of things um, somewhat prepared, yeah. uh, you know, as backups in case it, it went it went south. Yep. We have nothing. We have no safety net whatsoever. We, yeah, we got nothing. We, don't, we are we are flying blind, uh, yeah, as they yeah, say. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> now I have you know a master <clears throat> list of of, uh, of questions, and I could just pull it up and and just point to one and randomly, and we could we could see if we know the answers to them. Um, but before we do that, um, how, Jeff, how are you? Hey, uh, you know, Ryan, I'm okay. I'm pretty good. Yeah. I, uh, you know, let's, uh, before we get into all that mash stuff, because I know everybody wants to hear that and wants mm-hmm. to hear the behind the scenes, the important emotional elements and ingredients that went into the makeup of an incredibly in- uh, sh- good show that was on TV. Yes. Called MASH. Um, but before we get into that, I'd like to discuss the driver that I was supposed to buy. Now, uh, my friend loaned me a driver. He said, I paid 700 bucks for this thing. 
You can try it. If you like it, give me 200 bucks and it's yours. So I go to the driving range and I try it for about an hour. I hit a whole bucket of balls. My, the, my heel on the right foot started to hurt incredibly bad and I had to stop and I hated the driver. And so I now have that stupid thing sitting in the back of my car and I can't get a hold of the guy to get rid of the driver. Really? So here we are. I've got a driver that I hate. It's, it's taking room in the back of my car and I don't know what to do. So that's, that's what's going on for me. That's, the, that's my angst that I'm dealing with, right? So now. if the owner of the driver is listening, please pick up your phone and, and check your, your voicemails. Or pick up the damn driver. That or, yeah. Be <laughs> <That'd> be... <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that update, Jeff. Uh, yeah, we'll, you're welcome. Thanks. We'll continue please. to monitor the situation and see see how things are yeah. going. Okay, please. Um, thank you. Uh, now you, so you were at the beginning, you were, uh, you were reading your, your, your cookbook, uh, I was, I was, mess. you, there it is right there. Um, <laughs> this is great. one of the, <laughs> it is great. It is great. Um, the recipes are hilarious. Buy them. You can't buy it. It's done. You can't get it unless you go on the black market or the, what is it? The dark web. I think you go on the dark web or the behind the scenes web i don't think people web. are going on the dark web to look to for your cookbook. cookbook i just don't think so i don't know no just i mean saying. yeah um so a question that we get a lot yes. uh on routinely is do you have any updates on the cookbook um the the, the cookbook saga no <laughs> All right. This episode is going really, really well really? so far. Well, just like the last one we tried to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. No, I, I have an update. Okay. Here's the truth. I always want to speak the truth. I do most of the time. So the, the, here's the, the business side of a, of a cookbook written by a guy who was on MASH about the show and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I write the, sh write the book in 1995. Now that when I wrote the book, I was 10. So that was 19. <laughs> you wrote it in crayon, right? Yes. Yes. yes first draft. <laughs> it was hard because it just squished all over me. I didn't like it. <laughs> so uh, I made a deal. An agent got me the deal. The, the 20th Century Fox who owned MASH and they say, hey, we own this stuff. They own the rights to the television show. They allowed me to write the book. They, of course, got a percentage of each book that was sold. Not a huge percentage. They were decent, but a percentage. Now, the publisher who paid me to write the book handsomely, um, well, not that handsomely, but it was okay. <laughs> he, was uh, he was a handsome publisher. Is that what you're saying? Attractive man. Very yeah. attractive Good. man. All right. He paid me to write the book, uh, and he made the deal with 20th Century Fox, and I wrote the book. It came out in 1997. That's where you and I met when I was on your show, um, talking about the book, promoting the book. And it was a wonderful, I'm glad we did that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here today having this much fun and just uh, terrifying the listeners <laughs> with what we're talking about. Um, so the book sold pretty mm -hmm. good. Here we are in, let's see, in 2021. What I needed to do because the publisher did bad things with all of the um, all of the uh, the the printing uh, parts of the book, all of the files were he threw them away. That's crazy. That that's it's just a, crazy to me. It's, it's crazy. Why he did that, I'll never know. Uh, he, he said he did. I think perhaps he probably just accidentally did it. I don't, I don't know what it was, but he did it. I flipped out. Why did you do that? At least you could have called me and said, hey, you want to buy the files or pay me or we, you know, we'll restore what, whatever. It was a terrible thing to do. Hurt my feelings. Sure. And as a business thing, it was a terrible thing to do for the product. So I went <clears throat> after the publisher in order to. With a baseball uh, bat? Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, that driver. You could use that driver. Oh, wish I'd have had that driver. Oh, 
man, missed opportunity. So I said, listen, why don't you give me the rights to the book mm -hmm. and I will do what I need to do to reorganize the quality of the book. And so we can print it again. And he said, no, uh, that went on for a good eight months. He finally relented and said, okay, you have the rights to the book because in a book, the publisher does have certain rights to the ownership of the copyright. However, the, the author does own the copyright, still the publisher has certain publishing rights to that copyright and can do certain things. He wasn't about to give that up. I couldn't do anything unless he did. Finally, long story short, he relinquished all the rights. So now I own 100% of the rights to Secrets of the Mash, Mask the Lost Recipes of Private Igor. Fantastic. Fantastic. So now my goal is to reconstitute the book to bring the quality back to where it should be. In order to do that, however, it's a very complicated thing to do because um, I will need to scan a really good copy of the book, which I have a couple of, and then print them appropriately so that the quality of the book of the original book uh is is there again mm -hmm. so that's a process that i'm going through as to how to how to figure that out that's I tough may... too because uh scanners don't really pick up crayon <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yeah and, it, and they, it melts all over the scanning yeah, yeah. yeah it gets messy it's messy you got to yeah. find the right people that know these things <laughs> so i'm <laughs> i am uh, I am in the uh, process of attempting to try and figure out how to do this because uh, I really like the book is really cute. It's got a lot of great recipes. Um, yeah, it's a great book. Are, are wonderful. I'm thinking of, of doing a, a revised edition. If I'm going to do this, I could perhaps do a revised edition to uh, coincide with the 50th anniversary mm. of MASH. Mm. Mm. So all those things are going in. So I don't, I'm sorry if I bored everybody, um, but that's the logistics. Oh, oh, people stopped listening like Long 20, time 15 ago. minutes yeah. ago. Yeah, don't worry yeah. about it. No. It's all right. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a little nap. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that because people ask, that's the whole truth and nothing but the truth of what's going on with that book. And as soon as I figure it out and get it together, and if anybody has an idea, don't hesitate to call me. Okay. Uh, contact Mash Matters, and you will get a, a, a copy at a discounted price. <laughs> <laughs> so specifically, you, you you need just if if anybody has any guidance about like the scanning and the uh, so scanning, yes, scanning because there are a lot of re pictures in the book reformatting that I cannot recreate without a year's worth of effort. And they, the pictures were taken, the pictures in the book were, some of them were taken by me. Mm -hmm. Those are in the back of the book. But a lot of the pictures were taken from frames off of videotape that I spent mm. six months in an editing room saying, I want that frame. No, give me that frame. I'll take that frame. Because I wanted it to tell a story the way I wanted to tell it. Right. So I had to do frame by frame from 80 some odd shows to get the exact frames that I wanted. And that's hard to do again. Mm -hmm. So the pictures are there. If they're scanned properly and very well, they should be able to be printed with the same quality. So okay. that's what I'm. I well, that's a there. major update. I mean, you you, you said Thank you didn't you. really have an update, but that is a, that is a major update. So yeah, hopefully, that's... in the not too distant future, we will have yes. new copies of Secrets yes. of the Mash Mess. That is yes. that's that's fantastic. That's fine. See, thank you. This is a this is going to be a good episode. How about that? Too, right there. That too. that is worth the price of admission. Right there. And if you right don't there. like that, here's my new barbecue book. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious about barbecue. <laughs> it says is, Adam Perry but, Lang, but I don't know who that is. I, yeah. I, they made a mistake. <laughs> that's an interesting that's, uh, choice yeah. of uh, name to to go yeah. by. But yeah, wonderful book. Yeah, I got a lot. <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, okay. I have books over there. Do you have books? I, what, I, well, what about I, your book? I mean, I did. I co I co-wrote a book, but it's like a business book down there. Well, uh, darn good, darn yeah, well. It's, hey, it's down there, yeah. But uh, I I keep them on the bottom shelf to stay humble. You know, I don't well, want to put it up on the top, you know, and make it look like I'm a bigwig. I keep all the, yeah. the books that I help to write uh, down on the bottom shelf. 
well, you should, we should talk about one of your books on the bottom shelf. You want me to get a copy of it? Sure. Let's if I see walk it. over there, you're going to see and see people who are watching on YouTube are going to see that, um, you know, we always joke about not wearing pants, but um, you're going to see. I mean, okay, all right. Well, let, let's move on. You let, asked for we it. Don't, no. We don't have to. I, see maybe that. I can. Okay. Maybe I can pixelate this. Maybe I can pixelate this. Hold on a second. Yeah. Let me. Uh, okay. Let me step over here. See, I'm okay. telling you, I'm, I'm wearing yeah. shorts. See, I'm wearing shorts. Ah! Uh, let's see here. Let me grab this. Sorry. Shield your eyes. Avert your eyes. Yeah, children. Okay, I'm, I'm back. out of the room. Okay. I'm back. Okay. Um, so this is a book. This is a book that I wrote uh, with my friend Tim oh, Miles. Look at that. Uh, and brand Lynn your Miles Pisker. It's BYOB wow. brand your own business, and cool. it is it is available on Amazon. So if you want to uh, if you want to read it, um, I wrote some of it. Uh, my friend Tim <laughs> wrote most of it. Um, uh, Lynn wrote some really good stuff too. Um, the uh, the boring stuff in it uh, was written by me. Like this part okay. right here. That's good. the boring part, and it was written right. by me. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Yeah. So if you if you're a business owner, uh, or if you're into marketing, uh, that's what I do. You know, on the side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My side hustle. Uh, side when hustle. I'm not when I'm not podcasting and podcasting. coming unprepared. <laughs> pod, unprepared podcasting. Unprepared um, podcast. Well, that's yet your new book. Unprepared no, podcast. <laughs> and how to defeat it. We're on something there. Yeah. Well, we we haven't we haven't figured that out yet. Um, so anyway, yes, brand your own business. Uh, you can Very find it on Amazon. I, we'll put a link. I, we'll put a link in the show notes if you. If we've interested. been doing this for three years. I did not know you wrote that book. I don't like to, did you know. know I don't like to toot my own horn that way, Jeff. I'd like to, you know. Uh, why not? I mean, tooting. <laughs> you just toot and see what happens. You know, there's nothing wrong with tooting. I toot all the time, Jeff. I toot all. Yeah. That's my wife. She'll tell you. I too. Oh, well, well, well. Uh, yeah. So that's, uh, so that's my book. Uh, right Congratulations. There. Well, that's Thank you. good. Thank well, you. everybody should go out and, and buy one of those. Yeah. And uh, that's just and one of the. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, yeah. And so this is all my stuff. You can see if uh, this is my office and you'll see organized chaos in the video. Um, but right here, over, no, over here, I'm going to do this right here over my, uh, my shoulder. That's like, that's my mash collection back there wow that's all my mash that's all my mash memorabilia mash right? stuff maybe i maybe we'll do that someday maybe i'll do like a video or something and yeah. showing off showing off my collection and, and things but yeah yeah well okay i see behind me the, yeah. there's a few books there yeah and then there's a neat little bowl that's mm -hmm. cool that yeah. bowl yeah uh, let's see pictures of of me and my wife in paris the first nice. time we went to paris very nice i love paris in the springtime <laughs> i love it paris was so good uh <laughs> little thank heaven for little girls for without them what would little boys do you know that's a okay. weird movie it's getting weird a, it's getting weird, getting weird. Yeah. but he was weird that was a weird thing all about the little girls and he was a anyway i'm not gonna go there so okay so the pictures of uh, paris that nice uh, whatever that thing is that cabinet thing and this thing here uh, is my grandmother okay um and then down here oh wait a minute is that my grandmother uh, i'm not sure whose grandmother that is actually because you never know uh, it's a grandmother it's a grandmother um yeah. Or I'm not sure. That might be the neighbor. I don't remember. I don't remember. But I bought it at a swap meet. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it was a nice thing. And I they, didn't realize what it was. They, and they threw I the ashes it. in for free. Yes. <laughs> no extra charge. Yeah. <laughs> He's a French guy. Would you like the ashes with it? Uh, we will get you a good deal. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay, so uh, I guess we should talk about MASH at some point here, since this is a MASH oh. podcast, even though we're unprepared. I can pull up, you want me to just pull up a question and see? I can just get yeah. random? Okay. Random, a random um, question, see if we know the answer. Let's see here. Um, I, now, we may not be able to answer this question, but I'm just going to pull it up here. Okay, this one's from oh. Andrea. Andrea, uh, I believe Andrea is our, one of our uh, Patreon VIPs also. Um Hi, guys. I have another question for the never can probably be answered file. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we well, picked the right one for this episode, didn't starting we? Starting off good. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, whenever Hawkeye wore his dress uniform, he never had any decorations or medals. However, he was, I would think, eligible for two Purple Hearts. 
once when the heater blew up and once when he and Margaret were in the hut and the piece of ceiling came down on them. My guess is that he never would have put in for them as he probably wouldn't think they were worthy of decoration compared to the soldiers who were wounded in battle. Just curious of your thoughts. Now here's a question that might be able to be answered. Jeff, were there ever any military consultants on set to provide guidance to the actors? As always, love the podcast and very appreciative of all the work you do for us. Well, thank you, Andrea. Um, as, as far as Hawkeye, uh, yeah, I can't see Hawkeye ever wanting to put in for a Purple Heart. You know, there's the episode where uh, BJ uh, is put in for a Purple Heart and gets it in and for, for basically sacrificing a soldier to save his own hide. Um, yeah. And that uh, that really affected him in a in a big way. So um based on uh that episode with bj and just knowing hawkeye like we know him yeah i can't see hawkeye ever wanting to put in for any kind of commendation any kind of medal he was not interested in that at all although you're right he probably could qualify for one at least two uh purple hearts but i just see that i just don't, i just don't see him doing that no, um, i don't think so don't think so so jeff the question <clears throat> she said for you was was there a military consultant on i know you i know you had medical consultants on set uh to to kind of guide through the the operations and all the medical jargon but what about military were there military consultants on on the set well i can't i can't absolutely positively guarantee that there never was i never saw one hmm. um so you know they i i don't know i mean i to be truthful i don't know i don't think so but who knows, sometime they may have, you know, I, I think probably they would have been able to uh, uh, just call somebody up or look at, look at a book <laughs> you know, or something and look something up in a book rather than actually have a consultant show up at those things. I, I don't think there was, you know, there yeah. were Connie Isaiah was a wonderful, she was a nurse. She was there to help with all of the medical stuff. And so was Dr. Deschel did a mm -hmm. great job. Uh, for years and uh they were the two medical consultants that were the most important uh, but I, well, I never remember a military guy there and also you know gene reynolds and larry gelbart had gone to korea and all had also yes. interviewed all of these army doctors and yep. the military yep. sur you know the surgeons who, who had served in the military so i'm sure that a lot of the military uh, aspects of the show of the storylines <clears throat> were pulled directly from those sure right from exactly. those uh interviews a lot of it but and, but i'm yeah. I, you have to think that they had to there was some probably somebody on the rolodex who if they had a specific question yeah, about the military that they somebody. could call up yeah. but we just we don't know who that person was it, well including all of those people that they talked with all those doctors they probably could have just picked up and called dr bob and said hey dr bob uh, you're in korea what happens when this jeep goes in and said, something happened we got to do i'm sure they would have known as well so they probably used them as you know a yeah. little bit of guide you know right so right that's so what was our friend's name who uh, asked andrea. that question that was andrea. andrea yes thank you andrea for asking that question and don't ask anymore thank you very much <laughs> Uh, no, Jared, I'm just, Jared, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just picking another random question. Jared yes. says, and I know we've, at, we've, we've talked about this before, but he has a specific question. I'm wondering how many takes did Jeff get to dance with Tom Hanks' wife, Rita Wilson, <laughs> while filming Hey, Look Me Over? Mm, not oh. nearly, not nearly enough. Not nearly. Did you like keep screwing up in the background so that they would have to keep doing multiple takes? Uh, Boy, I, I tell you, I, I have to admit, I was smitten. I yeah. was just drop dead smitten. There I was. Yeah. And I, it's hard. I, it's hard not to be. Not to be, you know, I just, just the general, you know, I had to be very uh, um, connected to her uh, for the scene. You know, mm -hmm. so I could push Hawkeye out of the way, and that was the point that <laughs> right. I was very connected with this lovely woman, and and I was, and so, and then when I, I think I told this before, but I uh, went to change clothes. That was the end of the day. I went to change clothes, and I was I came running back to, you know, say, "Hey, would you like to get a marshmallow somewhere?" And, and she'd gone already, and I went she oh. disappeared into the night. Disappeared into the night. I think, I think. That was just before she uh, met Tom Hanks, just before. Man. So 
just that little just missed it by that much that much but she was she was very very nice and very sweet very very nice person so. and if you're listening rita we would love rita, to have you on the podcast please and i will apologize personally for everything i did that day <laughs> Maybe that's why she hasn't returned any of our calls so far. It might be, might be. <laughs> and Tom, stop calling me. Leave me alone. I'm, you know, the threats are going to go nowhere. He has a driver in his back seat, and he's not afraid to use it. Just saying it, Tom. Cool. It. cool. What a jerk! What a jerk! <clears throat> well, really, everybody thinks he's such a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my okay oh, let's see let's just pick up another let's just do another random Get another uh, question random here question um uh, okay i don't know. see this so is ladies and gentlemen some of these are really now, long and i don't want to read anything too long okay i just want to make sure that everybody knows where the all the sound effects come from this the crack sound effects machine i just um, sure people know okay where. so yeah, I'm sure that they didn't know where that came from. Um, so Lucas asks uh, some questions just for us, not necessarily anything with MASH, but oh. um, he says, uh, we asked tons of questions related to, to MASH, but we're probably missing some information on you guys. So he has, oh. three, he has three questions here. Yes, I'm ready. Um, what is your favorite meal that you can eat almost any time? And that is excluding creamed weenies, he points out. <laughs> um, okay. So what is your, so Jeff, what is your favorite meal that you could eat at, I mean, anytime, like if any day, this is, this is my go-to meal. Really good barbecued ribs. Okay. Barbecued ribs, barbecued ribs, barbecued ribs, really good ones. Long, slow cooking barbecued ribs. So they're just gorgeous inside and tasty and smoky and wonderful. Now, are these ribs that you are smoking yourself or is there a place in your area that you like to frequent to, to eat ribs? Well, I have not. Well, yes, there's one place that I used to go to that I would eat ribs at that were very good. And that was called Dr. Hogley Wogley's Tyler, Texas Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm sorry and, i'm sorry yeah. you have to say that for me one more time let me say that again for any of those of you who oh, please. missed that that's dr hogley wogley's tyler texas barbecue that is magnificent isn't that something yeah wow. it's, in the, it's in the valley i don't think it, i don't know if it's still there or not it probably is uh it's and they made the best ribs in a restaurant around me i i never tasted a better set of ribs anywhere other wow. than that restaurant. And that encouraged me to learn how to actually prepare smoked ribs. So I do that. And I have a, a cooking device called a Commodo or a Kamado, depending on your perspective. <laughs> and um, it's a low, slow cooking device made out of ceramic material. And you, it, can, it can cook for you know 14 hours if you wanted to, and if you work the airflow right. But that's what I do. I love it. I mean, I love it. And you, my friend, you were very uh, considerate and sent me a gift of barbecue sauce and some spices and things. And I thank you very much and used those. Yeah, those, things. well, those were from, um, I, I sent you, I think, some sauce from our local uh, establishment, uh, 17th Street Bar and Grill, which is yes. Uh, yes. our local and and these ribs that they they make there are uh have, have won like the world championship you know the wow, memphis and really? may and wow. yeah so like the big you know these are uh it was it was started by a guy named um, mike mills who was a legend uh in the barbecue world and uh, he passed away a couple of years ago um but uh, yeah so, so if you're ever in our area if you ever come here to visit me I'm, I'm taking you to 17th street so you can have some ribs over there i'm leaving i'm leaving in 20 minutes <laughs> okay his second question is what's your favorite thing to do on a saturday morning lucas wants to know <laughs> what, what do you like to do i guess you could say sunday or saturday i mean or just any morning i guess but particularly he has saturday um for me i like uh i like to go my wife and i like to go to antique stores and just oh. walk around and, and oh just look and we don't necessarily buy anything every now and then i'll find something to buy um but uh, we just like to go and and look around and 
marvel yeah. at the crap that people try to pass off as antiques sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's uh, so that's, that's so that's nice. one. Yeah. So that's one. That's one of the things we like to do on Saturday morning. Jeff, what do you like to do? Before I get to that, what about your favorite meal? What do you like? Oh, What's I didn't answer that. I'm sorry. I didn't answer. Let's, uh, let's hear that. Let's see. Um, I, I, I am, forgive me. I keep jostling around my, my chair is falling. Apart. No, it's okay. Mine, mine too. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm my, right. you know, for me, um, uh, I I'm, I'm a simple man when it comes to food. I don't, I don't necessarily get in for anything fancy. You, you give me a good burger or, ah. uh, or good pizza and I'm, ah. I'm golden. I'm golden. Okay. Uh, you know, now there, are, there is bad pizza out there and I, I know yes. where some of the bad pizza is and I try to avoid it at all costs. But uh, in this area, in the, uh, down in the Southern tip of Illinois, we we're actually blessed with quite a few really good pizza places. Ooh. And so, uh, yeah. So when you're, when Yum. you come Jeff, when, yes. when we're not at the rib place, I'll yeah. take it. I'm going to take you over to the pizza places. We'll Yummy. Do, you'll, you know, some people do like wine tours. I'll do a pizza tour with you. <laughs> I we'll, like it. I we'll just like get in a car and just get a slice at every spot. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm in. And yeah. you come here, I will make you ribs and a cheeseburger. My, hey. my uh, exclusive cheeseburger. I we can't will wait. Eat, we will eat like uh, maniacs. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, what was the question? Oh, what uh, do you Lucas do wants Saturday? to know, what do we do as our favorite thing to do on a Saturday morning? Well, it's none of your business, Lucas. Come on. <laughs> give me a break. What do you do on Saturday morning? <laughs> well, uh, hmm, yeah, hmm. You know what? On Sunday morning, what I like to do, um, my wife and I get up, and I make croissants. Oh. Uh, now I don't start from scratch. They're great croissants, and they're frozen. And you take them out the night before, and you set them on a pot or a, a slab of something. <laughs> <laughs> and they grow, they unfreeze, and they get poofy, and they're uh -huh. gorgeous. And then you put them in the oven the next morning uh, for about 20, 25 minutes, and they're drop-dead delicious. So on Saturday mornings, I make us great scrambled eggs, and we eat scrambled eggs with delicious croissants, and that's really fun. I like, that's what I like to do. And then oh. I drink gin uh, right immediately thereafter. Well, you just dip your croissants in the gin, right? You just dunk well, them. You, I, yeah. you know, I, I stopped doing it. It makes them soggy. I don't <laughs> like it. Uh, and his final question for us, do you like to mow the lawn? <laughs> okay, this is going to sound really stupid. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Although I don't do it any longer because we live in Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. And Los Angeles, California is on, started the drought, started pretty seriously here in California, and we're all over the place. And so my wife, who's a brilliant a landscaper person, uh, created a front yard and a backyard that is almost free of actual grass. So mm -hmm. she used all the succulent plants and all the things that she could find to make it so that we didn't have to have a bunch of grass that we had to water and mow. So we have a tiny little patch of grass in the front yard and a tiny little patch of grass in the backyard. Now, we do have a gardener. Why we have a gardener? I don't know. But he takes care of a lot of stuff <laughs> that neither she or I want to do. And, but I bought, before we had the gardener, I bought one of those cool electric uh, lawnmowers in Home Depot. Mm, yeah. Gorgeous machine. You know, I went, this is cool. So I brought it home and I charge up the battery and I use it. And for about maybe a couple of months, I was out there mowing every chance I got. I mean, it was a little, it only took like, you know, 10 minutes because there wasn't much grass. <laughs> but it was so fun because, the, the, you know, instead of gasoline powered thing, like, this was a, yeah. And we just hummed along and it would cut the grass and it was, it was really fun to do. It was relaxing for me. So yes, I do, but I no longer do it because the gardener guy does it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, so Ryan. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a love hate relationship with mowing. Um, uh -huh. I, I, uh, I have a riding mower and um, because I've, I've got about an acre here that I mow and um once I'm out there and I've got my headphones on, and I'm listening to a podcast or something. It's okay, but I, but I, I there's just I, I don't, 
I don't find it cathartic or relaxing like some people do. Some people like to get out on the riding mower. I I I don't necessarily enjoy it, but I'm I'm glad when it's done. I'm glad when I'm when I'm finished mowing. In fact, um, it's funny that uh, Lucas would ask this and that we would pull this question up because actually when we finish here recording this episode, I'm going to have to go mow. Uh, Whoa, our, you're going to go grass, mow? I'm going to have to because the grass is wow. getting high and it's supposed to rain this week and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, oh. I'm not uh, <clears throat> I'm not a big, huge fan of it. I'm loving this concept of basically replacing all of the grass in your yard with other things uh, so yes. that you don't have to yes. mow. That's an um, incredible concept. And I need to uh, I need to look into that. Um, if I could replace everything in my yard that has grass with something <laughs> yes. that's not grass. Yeah. Um, now again, though, I have like an acre, so that's a lot of stuff to replace. But I I think you're I think you're onto something, Jeff. You know, this lady gentleman, he said, "I have an acre." He's just the second time he said, "I have an acre." You know? that's <laughs> I'm a time. I'm a landowner, Jeff. Uh, you know, not only am I an author, uh, uh, I am a uh, author landowner. Uh, that's yes. how you afforded that acre with selling <laughs> those books. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this this book right here paid for. Um, well, I don't even know if I've made enough money from this book to buy the book. Actually, to be to be honest, oh, that uh, book's not cheap. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Ooh, do we have another one? This is fun. Uh, well, we have lots of them. Uh, let me oh, look through something. here. Uh, let's see here, boy. Um, something we can get sued for. Just some oh. kind of. Or at least a threat of a lawsuit. That's always fun. Uh, <laughs> we haven't we haven't been sued yet. Yet, and I'm no. a little disappointed. We're almost four years into this podcast, and we haven't been. You're nothing until you got a lawsuit going. Yeah. Um, Dean, okay. Dean asks a very a uh, burning question. Here, here we hey, go. Hey, Dean. Uh, Dean says, "Here is a critical burning question for your consideration. Why didn't Harry Morgan ever trim his upturned eyebrow? Was this ever discussed on set?" <laughs> Jeff, I want I want I wanted to read that to give you an idea of some of the questions we get here on the podcast and and why didn't he trim the upturned eyebrow? He did have some and you know, he did have some uh, pretty wicked eyebrows in some of those. Some he of those did, uh, you know, he did, um, he did. Uh, why he didn't do that, I don't know. You know, probably he was a guy in a war zone, um, mm -hmm. and uh, he probably didn't think it was an important thing to do and didn't even think about it. Um, yeah. Was my thought, he was a guy from, where was he from? Uh, Hannibal, Hannibal, Missouri. Hannibal, Missouri. Yeah. Probably in Hannibal, 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 <laughs> Hannibal, You almost Missouri. got it. Keep trying. I it. I, I'll, call, <laughs> I'll call in. <laughs> I'll leave a wake up call again in the morning. Uh, so uh, yeah. he, it was probably wasn't the most important issue on his mind and other people around him probably had uh, eyebrows and eyelashes sticking up all over the place too. So maybe it was I'm a character sure choice. Did. Maybe he chose, maybe he said, you know, Sherman Potter would have an upturned bushy eyebrow. It, it's very possible, very possible. It could be that he put it in his contract. I will do the role, but do not touch my eyebrows. <laughs> do not touch my eyebrows. I, I do remember he had a special eyebrow person come in and work with him <laughs> later on. <laughs> he was, but that's, yeah, that's I when know. you know you've made it right there. That's yeah. when you know you're a star. You have your own eyebrow person. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are a star. Um, he was uh, a great guy, by the way. You know, uh, I, I used to stand there and he was in line and say, said something to me and we were doing these scenes. And I thought he's. He, I'm looking at Harry Morgan, and he was in some of the best movies that I've ever witnessed, like High Noon and yeah. Hair at the Wind, and a jillion others. And I used to watch him and think, "My God, what a great actor!" And all these great parts. And then he's standing looking at me, and I'm going, "Oh, good. we need to write whatever I was saying." And I think, "What a great moment to be able to do this." To stand in front of me, he's looking at me and I'm looking at him. He used to be looking at Gary Cooper and you yeah. know, all these great stars. And he's looking at Jeff Maxwell. And I thought, boy, this is cool. So that, <laughs> this is cool. You think he was thinking the same thing when he was thinking, man, here I am looking at Jeff Maxwell. This I is... think, he, yeah, I think he was worried about his eyebrow. He's probably <laughs> going, God, I hope he likes my eyebrow. Or I hope I don't stick him with it. I hope he's not staring at my eyebrow. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> like he always does. <laughs> oh, no, but um, he was a great guy, great man, great yeah, actor. Yeah, I wish I so you know one of the uh, one of the sad things about this podcast starting this podcast so late is missing out on the opportunity to be able to. Oh, sorry, excuse me, I just oh. knocked things over. Uh, missing over to miss missing out on the opportunity to talk to people like Harry Morgan and yes and uh, McLean Stevenson and Larry Linville and you know and uh, yes. Wayne Rogers. I, what it, what it would have, how wonderful it would have been to to uh, to talk to David Ogden Stiers, you know, I mean, yeah. what, you know, and uh, yes. Yes. Uh, but, you know, we we uh, we are we have been able to talk to people who who talk to them, you know, yes. <laughs> and we're, and we're going to continue yes. to do that as well. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's the other thing is we're 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 still working on getting more interviews and and you know people will write in and say hey are you going to talk to this person you're going to talk to this person are you hey well what about this person who uh was in this one episode the answer to all of those questions is yes we would love to talk to them um we just don't always know how to get in touch with everybody but we we do have connections with some of these people and we're we're working or efforting to to uh, get some of those uh scheduled and I'm, i'm hoping that we'll have more interviews for you coming up i know we have some in the uh, in the pipeline that uh, we're working yep. on. And I think you're going to like them. I think you're going to enjoy them. And um, I, I, when we started this podcast, um, I said uh, from the start, you know, even if we could talk to the uh, the assistant to the caterer on the set, um, I will, you know, uh, the best uh, boys, the best boys, best boy, uh, yes. you know, even whoever, um, I, we will talk to them because they're all yep. going to have stories. They're all going to have stories from the set and uh, anything as a MASH fan myself, anytime I get to hear any kind of behind the scenes story, uh, no matter how mundane they may think it is to me as a fan, it is, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's, I gobble it up. I love it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're hoping to be able to bring more of those to you. Uh, so if, if you have ever written us saying, Hey, what about this person? Yes, we would love to talk to them. Don't know if we're ever going to talk to them, but uh, we hope that we can we can work it out where we can talk to them. So, well, uh, yeah, and uh, most people are very receptive to being guests. Um, mm-hmm. They there's no reason they shouldn't be, because... except for that one guy. We're not going to say who, but there's that one guy who. No, just... I'm not going to talk about him. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> and and we are. Yeah, I'm anxious and and looking forward to the folks who are coming up. Yeah, it's, yeah. It'll be, it'll be. Fun. Boy, the interview we had scheduled for today that that didn't happen. Ooh, doggy. Man, it was going to be a good one. Was going to be a good one. <laughs> you folks would really have loved that interview. <laughs> but but instead, unfortunately, instead, you got this. You got this thing. Yeah. This wonderful video. Thing. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I guess we could just wrap this up now. Um, you know, um, hmm. since we didn't really have anything planned, I don't have any way of. I don't have anything planned to to finish this episode either. Um, for those of you who uh, have uh, listened and watched this episode in its entirety, we're, we apologize. I am so so sorry. Um, so so sorry. Um, one more. Um, Steve Larkin from Columbia. Oh, Steve. Whoa, Steve, where has Steve been? Steve said hello. Just wondering what you guys think of the toys that were produced during Mash's run. Seriously, what child wants to play with a Charles Emerson Winchester the Third action figure? Hmm. <laughs> Well, one moment, you're going to see my legs again as I get up and walk across okay. my room. Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what kid. Again, please take the children out of the room. Right here. Please step away from the computer. This kid right take here. The children out. Okay. Yeah, here. This one right here would want to play with it. Wow. So okay. I have, uh, so if you're on watching the video, you can see that I have my Charles Emerson Winchester action figure here. Oh, look at that. Um, now have I have all that. the action figures. I have all of them. And wow. you can't really see up on top of my shelf. Um, I have a, uh, uh, they're all in a little display up there. Um, sorry for that. Um, but uh, this is Charles. And what's funny is uh, now this is the one that I have now this, but when I was a kid, um, I actually did have a Charles action figure when I was a kid, he was, I think he was the only one I had. <laughs> I was a Charles fan very, from very early on, early on. Um, so when you know, as a kid, and okay, let's face it, I was a weird kid. But when I'm a kid going to the uh, toy store, and here's Mash action figures, and I was a Mash fan even at an early age, uh, and I'm looking at them all, I'm like Hawkeye, nah, BJ, now nah, Klinger, huh? Winchester. Now that's the action figure I want, and so I have, 
Um, I had this when I was a kid, but this is not the one I had as a kid. This is one I bought, uh, or actually this was gifted to me um, by my friend who uh, wrote uh, this book. Oh. Uh, so, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, the, uh, to answer your question, Steve, uh, what kid would want to play with it? This kid right here. Well, there yeah. you go. The, yeah. There he is. There's so the I'll, kid. I'll take a picture of uh, all of my action figures and uh, I'll put them on the uh, I'll put them on the show notes for this episode, episode 84 at matchmatters.com. But you can see uh, this on the video as well, that there's my, and, in, and this was, uh, this was originally uh, for sale at Toys R Us. And the price on this was uh, $2 and 28 cents for this bad boy right here. When you, when you bought it new. Uh, you know, it's funny that Charles is not the guy that I would, connect to an action figure <laughs> right there, there's yeah nothing very the, the, there's no action in it <laughs> none yeah. i know thing. i know it's yeah. It, yeah they had the full set they had the ambulance they had the uh helicopter wow. and you know it was uh it was a thing you yeah, you can see on the back here actually there's uh there's some of the uh if you're oh, watching yeah. this on the video uh, you can see some of the other things that were for sale with the uh the action figures but uh yeah I don't have I, had, I don't have the uh, I don't have the uh, jeep or the ambulance or the or the uh, the helicopter yet. I'm I'm always looking out for them, but um, don't have. Them. I have something that I don't remember. I I have a drawer that I have a lot of stuff <laughs> you have in. Have a drawer. <laughs> I have a drawer. I have shelves. You have a mash drawer. I have shelves. <laughs> we should get together. Put our shelves <laughs> next to your drawer. Yes. Um, I have a drawer filled with things like that, and I yeah. and they're not only mash but other shows and people yeah. and stuff that i've collected over the years and so i'm going to go through that drawer and see what i have that might fit your shelf uh for <laughs> well, uh, ten thousand dollars i would uh, <laughs> when when i come out to your house and we yes. have the uh, ribs and uh cheeseburgers um right. i will take a look at your drawers you could <laughs> rifle through my drawers yes see absolutely you want to pick out <laughs> gift i'll just reach oh. into your drawers and grab something grab something Go and ahead. that does it for this episode oh, it, holy <laughs> matters. thank oh. you for listening thank you for watching uh again uh if you made it this far i don't know why but congratulations you well, did it. i i've got a chill this is the first time we've done a public uh video yes of it us is doing this and is. what a shame that we're doing this is the first time we're doing a video <laughs> imagine if we had been prepared imagine prepared oh. with a bunch of guests and famous mm. people it would have been great it would have, well here's this person here's that but no but you know what this is the purest you can get this is the <laughs> purest get any more pure than this <laughs> <laughs> oh unfiltered unedited on un everything there is everything yeah, you, sure. what you see is what you get. Um, it, but if you enjoyed it, let us know. Or if you yeah. said, uh, please don't ever do this again, let us know. We, <laughs> we understand. Know. We understand. Uh, uh, well, I want to know what you think about the hair yeah. and whoever that is in that uh, <laughs> In the urn over <laughs> Jeff's shoulder. If you're missing an urn, if, you're, if your grandmother is missing, Jeff might, missing. Jeff might have her. Yeah. <laughs> let us know. Uh, but hey, you can you can reach out to us, mashmatters.com. You can email us, mashmatterspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us on all the social medias. You can also call and leave a voicemail under three minutes in length at 513-436-4077. Or you can just come over to the house. For cheeseburgers and ribs and look through and rifle through Jeff's drawers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that does it. For this episode of Match Matters, thank you, and uh, and thanks to all of our Patreon VIPs as well. We will salute you in the next episode when we uh, have that salute actually prepared. Uh, but until then, here's looking up your old address. <laughs> <laughs>